Let me show you just a little bit about how we do things here at Alabama Pipe Welders Academy. What's up guys, thanks for joining us. This is Travis back at you again with another video. This one's gonna be about beveling. So we got some do's, we got some don'ts. Everything you need to be prepared on Two Inch Tuesday. So let's check in with the Scotsman and see how it's done. So basically we're gonna go over some basics for beveling. Every Tuesday we make all our students bevel their own pipe. It's Two Inch Tuesdays. Just a few things about this grinder. We use these chanted discs, they work real good. They're green, they take off a lot of metal. One thing you wanna check before you get started is if this guard is properly installed, if it's tight, if it needs to be tightened over here, there's a set screw right there that you can tighten it with. Some of the safety features that you need to watch out for, obviously safety glasses, grinding shield, ear plugs, you want to try to get a square cut pipe the best you can. Square meaning 90 degrees. Around the outside of a stock pipe, when it comes from the mill, they have this stuff on the outside, it's called mill scale. So you're going to want to have to get that off the outside and on the inside of the pipe. There's the coating that they put on it to keep it from rusting. But when I start grinding here in a minute, I'm going to have my hand on the, halfway on the handlebar and halfway behind it like this, so I can twist and turn and get my angle 37 and a half degrees. There's a few tools that you can gauge this with. A high-low gauge has an angle 37 and a half degrees. Okay, you can put it in, pull it back, and let this rest on the bevel. And if it's square right here, and that's touching the bevel, then it's square. And then it's you'll be able to you'll say, okay, it's 37 and a half degrees. On this one. Use this one a little bit different. It's like a mini cam gauge, but you lay it flat and then you can, you can see that this one's beveled already on one side at about 50. That's what not to do on that side. All right, so I got my earplugs in. You can kind of see the grip. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna start grinding up here on the top. And so like right now, it's a square cut. So I'm gonna start beveling this down and you'll see the land. It'll start coming in and the land will start going away and that's when I know it's time to roll the pipe. I'm always gonna keep the same position and then just roll the pipe. I'm not gonna come over here and grind and then come on this side and grind and then come down here and grind because you're, you're not gonna be consistent. You're not gonna be able to put a consistent bevel on it. You wanna basically stand in one spot and get a rhythm and then just roll the pipe, you know, loosen it up, roll the pipe a little bit keep going and you're watching that land as you come down. As the land disappears, you know you can move down further. You see the land right above my pinky? You see the flat spot? So I'm gonna keep grinding until that land starts going away. You can see how the land's getting bigger. And that's kind of like my gauge. I don't wanna, I, once the land disappears, I don't wanna grind on that no more because you'll get a wave. So we need just a little bit more. It's good to have a gauge, you know, if you're not doing this every day and, you know, hand beveling in the field, if you can get it close, that's good. But if you're 50 degrees, that ain't gonna cut. One of the big things about having a 37 and a half degree bevel, or sometimes less, I like 
Um, I like less of a degree of a bevel because I can weld it faster. I'm going to show you now some of the common mistakes we see, what causes, gives people a lot of problems when they're first starting out. So a lot of times people come in here and they'll dig this in. It's just all about positioning. A lot of times they want to get right in front of it and grind it like this. You, you want to be able to Keep that grinder with the contour of the pipe going around. That way you can see what you're doing. If you're right here the whole time grinding like this, you can't see anything. As you're going forward and backwards, you're making one pass at a time and you can visually see how much metal you're taking off if you're getting it too far laid back. And it's more of a feel. It's all about feel. So this is just a common end grinder. You can have a stone, you can have a burr motor or a flapper wheel. You want to clean the inside and just on the outside. You don't have to go back a quarter inch. You don't have to clean it that far back for it to be a good weld. You can see inside, inside and outside, all the way around. You know, a finished product to look something like this. That's a Schedule 40 pipe. What we're working with today is Schedule 80. Prep and cleaning is very important, especially when you get down to your alloys and different things. So if you're having hand bevel your, your pipe, uh, it's really important that you keep it all square as you're beveling it. I see wells that come in or, or bevels that come in all the time and they're doing this and it's, it makes for a hard weld if it's not prepped right. The last thing we're gonna really go over today is how to cut a square cut. So we're gonna get a, a wrap around, we'll make a mark, show you how to lay the wrap around out, and then we'll start cutting it and uh, give you some pointers on that. All right, so this is a small wrap around. You wanna wrap it around the pipe, snug it up to wherever your line is, and then if you can get it squared on itself, then you know you got a square cut. You're making a square line. You don't want to be like this. You want to make sure everything's squared up like this and you roll it back on itself. Once you got that, then you can come back with your stub stone or your permanent marker, your Sharpie, and make a straight line. And then that way, when you know, when we cut this, we know that if we follow that line, it'll be a square cut. We'll have a square bevel. Our bevels will meet up to each other. When we won't try to put a 1 8 gap in it, it won't be touching on one side and 5 30 seconds on the other. All right, we're going to use a cut off wheel. This is a Dewalt. It's got a brake on it. One of the common mistakes I see with people when they're cutting, trying to cut square, they've made their line square and then they're trying to cut it and they come right here and they just try to cut straight through. You can't do that. You gotta let the grinder do the work and you kinda kinda trace that line up and then same thing, I'll cut it and I'll spin the pipe. I'll keep my body position, my hand position, everything squared, all the same, whatever is most comfortable and that's what keeps it square. If you cut up this side and you come over here and you cut up this side, man, that cut's gonna be doing this and waving and back and forth. It's just gonna be hard to keep it square. But we're talking about basics for cutting and welding and, and prepping. A beginner, they're not gonna be able to come on this side, go on the other side of the pipe, come on that one, and keep it square. It's best if you keep it simple. Kiss. Keep it, keep it simple, stupid. That's what they said in the Navy.
So the first thing I do is I start tracing my line up. I'm scoring it. So once I got it scored, then I can rest the blade in there and go further with it. Remember, let the blade do the work. You shouldn't be putting any kind of pressure down on this. These things will bind up and explode, and I know you've seen people with them sticking out of their cheek. I just hadn't been trained properly. That's what we're trying to do here is teach you guys. So you see, I always come up and score the line first so I know where to go. Um, a lot of times when you're out in the field, just a, they don't want anything dropping. I don't care if it's that little. If you might be up on the fifth floor somewhere, and if you cut a little ring like that and it falls 200 foot, hit somebody, it's going to hurt them, possibly kill them. So you always want to have somebody hold this, or you can get it down to the last little bit like this and pull it up and break it off. And that's just the, being safe, looking out for your, being your brother's keeper. Look out for people. A lot of jobs, if you if you cutting something and it's you know got some weight to it and it hits the ground and they see it, you run off. That is a safety hazard. Letting stuff fall. That's it doesn't matter where it is. You just need to get in the habit of not letting things fall. Get somebody to hold it with some pliers. Have somebody have it on jack stands or do like I did and and cut it all the way almost and then just break it off. Don't drop it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope y'all learned something today. We like to push our students here at Alabama Pipe Wears Academy. So with that in mind, I'd like to share a story with y'all. Once there was a very wealthy Texan. This guy filled a huge swimming pool with alligators and snakes and made a standing offer that if anybody could swim the length of the swimming pool, he'd give them six million dollars. Everyone knew it was impossible, so nobody tried. But at one party, when he made this offer, everyone heard a big splash. A man was seen swimming from one end of the pool to the other with reptiles behind him. He barely made it. As he pulled himself out, the Texan said, wow, I'll get you that check for $6 million. The guy said, I don't care about that. I just want to find the guy who pushed me in the water. The people who have the biggest impact on us are often those who have pushed us. Most of us won't even make a very big splash in life unless a teacher, parent, coach, or friend pushes us to our very best.